Okay, okay. Check one, two. Check one, two. Miami on the Rocks. Casey Chops. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at MIA on the Rocks. Follow us on YouTube. Please hit that subscribe button. Today's guest, a really, really good friend. I've known him for over 10 years. I consider him to be a legend in this city. DJ Zog, how are you, my brother? Yo, so are the... Uh is the crowd going crazy right now? We can put sound effects. I need sound effects. I need that. I need that. Keep it going. I need stadium put, sound effects right now. The crowd is going crazy. Thank I you. Got, I'm definitely going to do that. So man. are we taking a shot yeah, right now? This is a shot. Uh, Look at this. A real uh, shot. Boom, Casamigos. Casamigos. Thank you for pulling up, bro. Tequila. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. We don't have a We're a bunch of rebels. You know what I do now? Woo! I go to the club and I drink half the bottle and then steal the other half, put it in my backpack and take it from my home. That's what you kids do these days, huh? Yeah. <laughs> You've like, never stolen a, a half a bottle before in the club before? Come on. No. Nah, You've you never know, snuck it in your bag ever, your DJ bag leaving? No, bro. You know what I would do instead? I would bring my own bottle. So instead of spending, you know, and you have a limited amount of drinks right. or whatever, and instead of spending all this money at the bar, I would bring my own bottle. So, you know, I mean, it was a $20 bottle, $30 bottle of tequila yeah. or, or vodka. And yeah, I will never forget that. And I get it. I got in trouble for it a couple of times. You like kept it on the floor and shit? Yeah. Or like in a bag? Yeah, I did. I would bring my own bottle. We bring wow. our own beers too. That's nice. In a cooler. That, that. In a cooler. And we sneak it in with, with the DJ bags and then no one ever questioned anything. <laughs> oh, that's nuts, bro. I got, yo. Are you okay? Huh? <laughs> Just took a shot at Casamigos. I'm good. I'm trying to gather myself. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for pulling up, bro. Yeah, bro. We have Come a lot on, to we discuss, fam. I, I don't know about that 10 years, though. I think it's been a little bit more than that, all right? Yeah. Oh, bro. For the DJ Zog actually hired me at Power 96. Look at that. Which was, yeah. I wow. hired you. That's right. And and, and I, I think. But hold on. To what, doing what? Answering phones? Answering phones. When we used to take requests. That's right. That was crazy. That's right. And, and people would call in, ask for a certain song. You jot it down at the end of your shift. You'd add it all up. And that's how we determine how, you know, how many requests we would get for songs and, and how we how much we would play the song every single week. Yeah. People, people think that radio stations just play whatever the fuck they want. No, there's actually research done and we decide no, based on like the market and what the people want to hear, how much we play yeah, songs. Yeah, so actually, it's not just like, there's actually a science behind it. Yeah. Most people don't know, Yeah, yeah, but, but they, they don't realize, but it's okay. Um, and I, 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 I'm going to assume that a lot of DJs are going to tune into this because I don't, haven't really had any DJs on here except Don High and we didn't really have DJ talk. And when you did hire me, it was in 2007, I brought it up to you that this you were actually in the process of switching from vinyl to Serato. Look at that. Like DJing with a computer for the first time, Damn. which was crazy. Yeah, that was. I thought that vinyl was never, ever going to go away. Yeah. I, I said, oh, this computer thing is a fad. It's a, it's a trend or whatever. And it, I mean, obviously, like it wasn't. But uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a transition for me. I was a little bit later than a lot of other DJs, but not too late. But it was, you know, a big deal because no more. Were you the first one at the station? No more crates. Um, I, yes. Yeah. Yep. I, and, and I think we could agree that nothing is going to top the feeling of vinyl ever. No. Like you could do. It. No, because as a DJ, you have control. You know, right. you feel like you have control. And, and as a, as a true, like, um, uh, mixologist or, right. you know, a, a turntablist. Right. Like that is that there's a feeling that you have when you're actually touching the vinyl and, and rocking and mixing and blending the songs with the vinyl. I think a 20, like a 24 year old DJ might argue with us though, bro. And, and kind of to, cause they've never, they're not used to vinyl and they're yeah. used to a CDJ platter, yeah. you know? So maybe they would argue. I don't know that, what it is. They, yeah. They would argue, but because, right. but the thing is that, cause I lived through it and so did you. So there's like this novelty of it. There's this, just this uniqueness of like just watching the vinyl spit. People like watching that stuff. Yeah. They yeah. like it. They enjoy it. Yeah. It's going to get, I to did like all my lives uh, back in April. Wow. Uh, every DJ did a, um, you know, a, a live on Instagram, right. you know, everybody. And I said, all right, what can I do that's different than everybody else? And I just did all vinyl set. <laughs> and all vinyl set. Bro, how was that? You were like, like blowing off the dust of your. Yeah, it was shit? rough though. It was rough. It was, it was going because when you're talking about thousands of vinyl and you're flipping mm -hmm. through all the and and here's here's a I mean imagine your laptop having five thousand songs, but then you have no organization, no crate, and no right. like um, like certain crates or whatever. I, so 
I would go through the vinyls like, all right, here's a freestyle song here, here's a booty song here, here's a hip hop. So I spent a lot of time organizing it. But once I got it all, I did, you know, the first one, I, I forgot what the first one was, but I did a freestyle one, then I did a booty Miami bass one, wow. which was the biggest one ever. Everybody likes that. We freak them high, we freak them low, we freak the holes straight how, to how the many, flow. How many vinyls are in one crate, would you say? Like if you're going to do a, a 30 minute booty set and mm -hmm. you're slamming records, you're yes. going through them. Like yeah. how, how many vinyls would you have in one crate? Um, and for 30 I would minutes. say like just to have on the safe side, 50 to 60. In one crate? N well, I mean, the crates hold a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I'm saying like in like 30 minutes, like I want to have like that just, it feels, I'm not going to play it all, but it's just, right. it's good to have like right. enough. In the club, like you would bring like, how many vinyls would you say? Oh, that, man. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, that's like... Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I've never DJed with like actual. I've never owned crates of vinyls and bring them to like. I caught the era right when Serato started. Yeah. you know, and all DJ. You're not a real DJ if you didn't DJ with vinyl. Like, and that is why you have a strong back. Oh yeah. You have a good back. Yeah. I have a weak back because I, you'd have to pick up the vinyl and bend up. You know how yeah. they say you got to bend your knees and, yeah. and pick up the vinyl or whatever. No one ever actually but bent their knees. Did you guys have like slaves back then? Like, we did. Yo, like we, everyone had like their own little. We we did, and we had hand trucks and the and, and the and the uh, yeah. and the dollies and stuff like that. But still, you have, still have to carry this stuff, man. And how and, many crates would you bring? Like I bring two, but like the big, the big one that holds, uh, you know, I don't know, three hundred pieces of vinyl. Jesus, bro, yeah. six hundred vinyls. To, yeah, damn, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, I actually was a conservative one. Someone like DJ Irie would uh -huh. would have. He had his guys. He'd bring eight or nine crates like that, like that big to the club. What? Yep. He's doing like a like an hour and a half or a two hour set. He's bringing seven thousand vinyls. <laughs> We were talking about now, like the norm for D it seems like right now the average DJ set when you get booked mm -hmm. at a club, four hours, three, four hours, yeah. I would say. Right. That wasn't the average when in, in let's say 07, right? 05. This it, is new, right? But it, it depends, bro. I, I You mean, were doing I, four hours back then, bro? Yes, bro. I was doing Okay, so I'm wrong. I'm wrong. No, I, I but I would also do two hours. I would do live broadcasts back in 07. Okay. I would do two hour sets when we were doing like live broadcasts. But I don't want to age myself too much and date myself right. too much, but when I used to DJ like on South Beach uh -huh. back in a, a while ago, yeah, Daniel, you don't have to say. Uh, um, I would do straight up ten to four. Really? Uh huh. Yeah. Damn. See, I, the, I I'm I'm wrong. I can admit when I'm wrong, Zog, because recently I've been getting on these young DJs for doing six hour sets. Four hours, because when I came up, it was in live broadcast. The first time I ever DJed, like, really was on a live broadcast, bro. Like, to be honest with you, it was two hours. So when when these new DJs started doing six hours, okay, four was cool. Five, you're pushing it, but I'll do it. But recently, these new DJs started to do six hours. And, and instead of having an opener and a closer, they're taking the budget for the opener and the closer to do both sets. And I kind of got mad at them. Like, this is new. That We shouldn't be doing this. We're cheapening what we do. But you're telling me six hours, set, five, six hour sets have always existed. Yes, they have. Okay, yeah. well, okay back then in the I'm day, wrong. Back in the day, uh, it'd be like maybe two DJs and we would together maybe go back and forth. But still, it was a total of, I, I remember getting to the club at like 9.30 because it opened at 10 mm -hmm. and start 10 and it'd go to 4 or 5. And not having an opener, just doing the whole thing. I've done plenty. I can do that. Yeah. Okay, then I'm yeah. wrong. I have to totally yeah. reframe how I'm thinking about this shit yeah. because it, it, it's nuts. It just seemed like club owners were taking advantage of DJs and, yeah. and, and the time, you know? And, bro, five hours is a long set, bro. It, like, it can, but if you are a true DJ that knows music and studies the music and has a good library, an extensive library, right. okay? Right. That ain't shit, fam. You're right. But see, you came, we both came up doing live broadcasts. So that's like, I, I look at it like sprinting. You have jogging and then you have sprinting, right? Yeah, when so I have you to do a two hour set, I gotta, I gotta go. Right, I so gotta, I gotta move it. It's not. It's not the same. I, so you'd rather do. I enjoy doing a three or four hour set. So you're not longer. You're not tired. Like when you do those five hour sets, you're not tired by the time it's time to sprint. You know what I'm saying? Like nah, man. Yeah, nah, yeah. man. Yeah. If you have a musically mature crowd, right? That and I'm not talking old. Yeah. I'm talking about a crowd that appreciates the journey you take them on. Right. So they're not gonna sit there and go. It's the, you know the, the person that comes up and says, "Can you play Bad Bunny? Can you play?" Cardi B, right. and that's all they want to hear. They don't give a shit about anything else. Right. Like that's whack. But when you have a crowd that under 
understands and knows like obviously they're going to know the new music but they mm-hmm. know the different genres they can under they can appreciate the old school reggae and the mm-hmm. beanie man and the Sean Pauls mm-hmm. and then when you go into like the old school reggaeton mm-hmm. and you go into maybe like some of like some 80s like classics and retro and then like the the, the, the 2000s hip hop and yeah. next and too close and Missy Elliott and Biggie Smalls and bro just you know what i'm saying it's definitely cuz it feels like you get to open up for yourself yes. and kind of set the vibe yes. but this is like this happened to me maybe a week and a half ago i'm at brick and camilla was DJing and he was yep. head- and he, and he has a two hour set hour 45 minute two hour set are you referring to and DJ Carmelo Ka- DJ Carmelo yeah he's, he's one of these I really look I up to I know that guy I've heard of him yeah <laughs> fellow Colombian sarcasm anyway <laughs> but he came in Zog and when he got there it was energy like what are we yeah. doing set up da-da-da. kill it kill it take, take the, the, the IG boom 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 selfie da-da-da-da. and he had that energy like this and, he, and I was like, damn, I envy that because I could never do that because I'm already tired as shit. I've been yeah. DJing for two hours, so yeah. I can't turn it on like that. And and I mean, obviously, we bring the energy, but yeah. it was it was something that I was like, damn, like he's able to do that because he's he's only there for two hours. So yep. he, yeah, he goes you know, zero to 100. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. Right. That's exactly what he does. It's a little bit different. Um, when you're doing a five or six hour set, you're right. Because, you know, you're kind of, you're taking them on, on a journey. Right. You know, and it's like, let's, let's go for like, let's go for a jog rather right. than a sprint. Hey, by the way, um, this is a piece. <laughs> no, straight up. I forgot. Actually, it was, um, no, this is a piece of Cuban bread, buttered Cuban bread. I haven't touched it. Um, is it hard where it gets like a rock and you could like kill it's someone about with it? Like, to get there. So if you want just a, a quick bite of it or just so you can maybe get something in your stomach, I appreciate I, you, you bringing me like uh, aged Cuban bread at 11 o'clock at night on, on a smooth Friday. I'm going to, I'm going to take how this. many other guests come and bring you a gift like this. I haven't touched it by the way. It's from a Las Vegas Cuban restaurant. Yeah, that's mm, classic. Mm. You took me there for the first time. We're not going to bleep that out. No one's getting free plugs out here <laughs> anyway. Um, so bro, so you've been on Power 90, damn Zog, I apologize if I, I'm definitely not going to age you, but you've been on Power 96. 24 years. Okay. <laughs> and and we can all agree if you grew up in South Florida that Power 96 is an instrumental radio station. Um, you know, it was a part of everybody's childhood and it's a legendary station. And I had this talk with Walshie Fire um, the other day on my podcast and we talked about the uniqueness of Miami and we all know it's a cultural melting pot, but whether you're from West, you're, whether you're a white girl in Weston, you're a Cuban in Hialeah, you're a Dominican Alapata, you're a Haitian in, 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 in little Haiti, you've grown up with all different types of music. You're, 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 you have an advantage over anyone in any other city. And we said, you know, Miami is a global city, but you know, we said New York is a global city, LA is a global city, but the difference is that they weren't at, like you don't have Russians in New York adding to the music scene, adding their culture into the music pot. Over here in Miami, me and Walshy discussed that you have, you had, Cubans putting their flavor into the music. You had Dominicans, you had the, you know, house music, and it was a big gumbo. And I am of the belief that the reason everybody is that grew up in South Florida is so cultured musically is because Power 96 gave that to us in a gumbo, in a palette. And they gave, they gave they gave us everything. They gave us the hot house song at the time. They gave us the hot reggae song at the time. They gave us the hot Latin song at the time. They gave us the hot hood song at the time. And it was packaged in a gumbo where everybody was cultured and everyone digested it, right? It was awesome because you, you labeled it perfectly right there. Where the best of each genre, we had basically a green light to play it. Right. And I credit like uh, you don't uh, I want to say inspirations like you, DJ Def, Eddie Mix, DJ Laz. You guys don't get the credit because you have 99 jam DJs. They're, they're, they're on the left, which is the urban side. Then you have the the, the, the Y100 DJs. They're on the, the top 40, the right side. But you didn't get a gumbo like Power 96. Like and, and I want to. You you guys don't get your roses. You guys don't get your flowers. You know what I'm saying? And, and, I, and I love roses. Yeah. Yeah. So take me back to like the like what you guys did was so important to the city. Like the methodology of, of combining like that's dead right now. Every every radio professional, every radio exec would say we cannot play all these different types of music. But how did you guys make it work? And you were playing local music too. like. Power 96 always mirrored the market. Mm-hmm. So whether it w- whatever genre of music was the trend or the songs, we always wanted to do that. The other radio stations were kind of boxed into their 
uh, format. Right. Our format was whatever. I mean, yo, well, it was we, played, we played Suavemente. Yeah. And then we played to Sonrisa by Elvis Crespo. It's like, we're supposed to be a top 40 radio station, classified as a top 40 radio station. It was rhythmic though, right? Yeah. For the people that don't know, you have yeah. Urban on the right, you have top 40 on the left, and rhythmic is in the, in the middle, essentially. Kind of, yeah. And, and it, it, you know, and we lean maybe a little bit more hip hop, mm-hmm. believe it or not. But the point is that we're playing a straight up merengue song. Right. On like a you know on, on a on a pop right. st- pop top forty station rhythm station and it's like that that you know but that's because we didn't have like we weren't um, chained corporate wise like right. all these other stations you know they were they were following their orders or whatever when we had owners that had the program director that that they trusted right right. Yeah, and, and and DJs like you, DJ Def, and, and Eddie Mix, because you guys were out in the streets. That's right. Yeah, you guys- we we brought the music from the streets to the radio station. Right. We and 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 from the clubs, right. straight up. And we would. Um, that was a major factor in making sure that, like, at the time, Power ninety six was like playing like the trendy stuff because right. you know we would you know whatever it was i mean what, what so you guys would go from like sean paul yeah, right yeah and then you have the hot david Guetta song at the time yep. and then you would have the hot pit song at the yep. time yep. and but it but it worked yeah. and, and and it made this city power 96 it w- was the station uh, is the station of miami but it made everyone that grew up in this city cultured it, it, it really did. It yeah. opened people that grew up in this city have an open mind musically because of they listen to Power 96. You know what I'm saying? I mean, listen, you're more of a salesman than I am right now. So Right, right. <laughs> I just want to give you, uh, bro, a lot of this podcast is going to be me giving you your flowers, giving, yep. you know, people like Eddie yep. Mix, yep. Def, and Laz, because I don't think people realize. They don't. You know, no, they, they, don't. they don't. They don't. Yeah, they don't. They, they don't. They don't realize it because you know when something's always there, and you know you right. kind of take it for granted a little bit. Right. But why do you think like New York? Right. You have Hot ninety seven. Mm-hmm. You have your you know, Power one hundred six in L A. Mm-hmm. And these are both legendary stations. Yes, heritage but, stations. But they were still. They didn't have the ability to be able to pull from all these different genres. You know what I'm saying? And if there was one common thing I could say about Power ninety six is that. It was edgy and cool. So if, if they had to pull from a house song, it was going to be a cool house. It was going to be edgy. It wasn't going to be like a like a. I don't want to you know say like a, a like a poppy. It wasn't going to be popcorn. It was going to be a cool house song. It was going to be a cool reggae song. It was going to be a cool. Well, hip-hop. you talked about it before. It's because of the population and the um, the term is uh, the ethnic. Um, damn it! Now uh, hold on. The ethnic composition right. of the market. So right. right. Guess what. Miami has a Latin population, but it's not the Latin population like in L.A. or New York, where we had the real mix of of, of uh, nationalities and cultures. Right. And we as a radio station wanted to reflect that. And we right. were successful at it. And another thing I could probably say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think out of all the radio stations in the country... A lot for the people that don't know, a live broadcast is when a club, when, when a radio station is at a club and they're playing from the club on the radio. Yeah. And Power ninety six was at a broadcasting from a club every single night, so you were getting like a real street feel on the radio. And I could probably go on. I don't haven't done research, but I could probably go on a limb and say that there's no other station that had the amount of live broadcast in the country like Power ninety six. I don't know, but I can't imagine that happening. I mean, ima- right. b- b- the fact is that, yeah, we had seven nights a week. We were live from a nightclub for right. every single night of the week. I right. did five out of seven <sighs> at one point. I will never forget that, bro. That's incredible, man. Uh, what was it? Uh, Friday night, Club Atlantis. Uh, Saturday night, I did uh, Alcazaba. Sunday night, Club Deep. Tuesday night, Cafe Iguana. Beach Place. Wednesday night, Bermuda Bar and Grill. Thursday night, Cafe Iguana Kendall. I did all that. And that, by the way, by the way, I did it. And then I did it to a point where eventually I went to the hospital because of it. What do you mean? I got meningitis. What is it? Oh, Bro, it, it, it just I like it, biology. You gotta, it's just it's just like you just a, overworked yourself, like like a virus, like like a bad bad flu type of thing, and it, it like was. Hey, re- we've been getting viruses before all this COVID shit. So yeah, we've been it was you. it was really bad. I was eating checkers for like breakfast when I'd wake up, and then all, like <laughs> okay, just, so that, but like mad fast food. I didn't take care of myself, and it was like every, you know five nights a week. It was all about the Patron and the vodka and the yeah. shots nonstop, and that it just it drove me crazy. Wow. Yeah, man. Damn. Yeah. So how did I like cut it out? I was in the hospital for like a week. What? Yeah, bro. It was so, crazy. Uh, 
Okay, so this is going to be a, a a tough question. I don't, I, maybe you can't even answer it, but but the parties at, are great. It was all worth it. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing: we all, as DJs, I feel like we have eras. Like, okay, yep. the the club deep era, the, the era. So if you had to say your top, I'm not five might be extensive. Your top three clubs mm-hmm. that you've ever DJ yes. the era. What are the top three for you? Um, top three. Let me see. Club deep was just so many, so many memories. Okay. The, the fish tank. The Sunday night. Okay, wait. You got to explain that because the was, people uh, that don't. The, the, the dance floor was a fish tank, a massive fish tank, and then you you like step up a couple steps and like it was a dance floor, so you could dance and on and the you, fish tank. Yeah, yeah, this was on Dancing, Washington and yeah. Uh, what was it? Uh, shoot, uh, yeah, six twenty one or something like that. Wait, no, six, no, wait, wait. Club Deep was uh, Washington Avenue though. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay, that's number one for you. Anyway, it uh, might be the where the Rockwell was. Maybe did it have like the S? Like Six twenty one Washington Avenue. That was it, I believe. So anyway, so that was number that was number three. Um, by the way, like, num- number three. What you, we're going top three, right? Oh, that's your first one. No, no, that's number three. Okay. Number, number two. Uh-huh. Oh man, Cafe Iguana Kendall. See, I didn't even know there was a Cafe Iguana Kendall. That, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it was. It was awesome. Thursday night, Thong Thursday. Wow. Yeah. That was when, <laughs> you know, it's so funny when yep. you say shit like that. And when I play like Cisco thong song, sometimes yep. I'm like, damn, when a girl showed their thong back then, it was a thing. Now you just go to Instagram. Well, and see, no, like, well, yeah, well, they had, they had the, the reason why they called it thong Thursday is because we had a thong contest on the stage. So after the broadcast at two o'clock in the morning, when we were done or to whatever it was, we would, um, the girls would get up on the stage and it was like, all right, do your thong thing and, and just wow. entertain. Dance a little bit. And Kendall know? was that uh, uh, Cafe Guan and Kendall. What, what what was that? Is that is that Town and Country? Like, where, where Blue Martini's at now? Inside, or the, kind of. They they redid them all a little bit. Or it was Town gotcha. and Country okay. down there. Yep, that was that was classic classic party. And my number insert drum roll now. <laughs> my number one. It was a live broadcast and it was a party. And people ask me all the time, "Oh, what memorable clubs or whatever?" And there's, I'm, I, by the way, I'm missing a lot of them. Right. Uh, not that I'm missing, but you know, they were great. But the the probably the most memorable club was Club Atlantis on Fort Lauderdale Beach on Friday nights. It was a live broadcast. Damn. This was a complete shit show because it was a foam party as well. And so we'd show it was up outside. Indoors, okay, indoors, but it was you can imagine just I don't know, like like seven hundred people in the club, just but the the foam party. So everyone was like dressed in like bathing suits or like you know some They're people coming had, to the club in bathing suits at night. That ha- yes, yes, legendary, crazy, and um and no matter what I played, everybody would just turn up to it no matter what. And everybody was just, it was just a vibe. Can you think about what the hottest song of that era was that would just make the club go insane Damn, at that time? I I, I will say this. um, I mean, I I, I gotta, I have to think about that one, but like a song like Better Off Alone. Okay. Even though I know it's, I mean, for that genre was like, you would play that and everybody would just go bananas with that. Wow. Um, But, but, you know, so much because, um, I mean, I, the booty music always worked. Okay. The booty music always worked. And so the girls would enter, be in a contest in the middle of the club and they would have their bikinis on or like their thongs or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and it was just like, like a hot body contest type of thing. But the host liquid would be on there and then he would slap the girls on their ass mm-hmm. and then leave the handprint and so the girl that had the most defined handprint won the contest. This could never work today. That's crazy. Yeah. And then he put the microphone up against, we'd lower the music up against her ass, slap it. And then you can imagine you're a bah! And you're hearing it on the radio. This is in the live broadcast. Yeah, that happened. See, yeah. this is Power 96. This is the heyday that you're never going to get anywhere else. Yes. That's insane. Yeah. And then, you know, and, and you know, to have people at the front of the club, like watching, like from a distance and they hear the... Like oh oh, and you're hanging, and you're driving like on the radio from McDonald's and shit, and you're like, yo, it's going down over there. I gotta. And then hold on a second, you have these two girls like, oh man, I don't know, it's a tough one to call. I gotta do it again. So then he slapped the other cheek. Oh, legendary. And then the other one. Girls would have like handprints on their cheeks from the. Bro, those 
girls are like true story bro those girls are like mothers and grandmas yeah, today that's, that's insane right. yep and, you know i'm in the dj booth <laughs> watching this you know and i'm i got i got the records ready to go so like it's like all right we got to decide uh which is the winner between this between between them right now yeah. and it was like all right damn and all this is going down and you're using vinyl like you don't know you can't even chill with serato you have to like get your crates yes. and shit yes. like yes that must be annoying. Scrub the ground. If you got a lot of booty, <laughs> let's go. Matt Blunt in the house. Shake yeah. it, shake it, watch out. Shake it, shake it. <laughs> Damn, dude, bro. You, you, you have any crazy, like, because I've heard so many stories and so we are not on the radio, so we have to take advantage of this. No uh -huh. FCC regulations, but do you have any other, like, crazy stories that you could think of from the top of your head? Like, maybe from a live broadcast, maybe from... Yeah. Like, any yeah, I mean, uh, eventually, I don't want to like spoil it. Eventually, hopefully, maybe we'll get DJ Laz on one day. Yeah, he's probably but, jealous but, but, that I'm on right now, right? But he 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 doesn't want to offend his political connects, probably. So he'll he'll probably play it safe. But you could air out everything. I don't know no, if wait, he's gonna want to say. No, he'll tell you what that microphone did at Club Deep on South Beach during the contest. Jesus. That microphone, that wireless Jesus. microphone, what some of these girls did to it. Jeez. It was it was bad. It was really bad. I grew up in the wrong era, bro. It was I grew up in the wrong era of Miami, bro. Yeah. Like these girls wanted to prove a point sometimes, and they had no shame. Yeah, on whatever it took. Wow. <laughs> but you know who knows, dude? Who knew, you know who was there? Pit Pitbull was there. Wow. He was there um, at at Club Deep during some of the stuff, some of the shenanigans that happened. <sighs> Talk about that. Okay, so we've established that Power 96. Can we uh, talk about other other things, too? <laughs> yeah. yeah what do we have? I said, this guy's a scumbag, man. Yo, what, 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 to this. As far as what? Just to, you. No, no. I'm just saying it's like... It's like, oh, this guy's talking about all these uh, all these X-rated things that are happening no, yeah, back yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I was about to change the subject right now. Like, <laughs> I was going to the political correct, correct conversations, but we've all, we've established that you know, Power ninety six played all these different genres. But yeah. you guys also, you know, birthed and broke so many different artists as well. Yeah, and, and Rupee, right? <laughs> Kevin Little, that's the first one you. Sean Paul, right? They're Before so he was even signed to Atlantic Records, when he was only on VP Records. We played Sean Paul, and the reason we we ended up playing, um, which was the one I don't know if it was. Um, hold on, what but what it? made you guys want to like break a reggae artist at the time? Like because because that was popping in the club. I said this, Zog. Check this out. I said this to Walshy too, and I said, you know what, this generation is missing. They're missing because Zog. I still play, I, I call it the Power 96 reggae and dance hall. Yeah. But this genre, this generation of kids, they're missing a Sean Paul. They're missing that crossover reggae artist because reggae is kind of like on the decline now in, mm -hmm. in Miami. And it's so sad to me because you, you, you could get it off, but the young kids are not trying to hear the reggae anymore. Like how the young, for example, the generation before the Latin kids would want to hear reggae they'd want to hear sean paul but these latin kids in miami in this generation they don't want to hear they don't want to hear reggae right and it's sad to me because there's no crossover easily digestible reggae music for them you, you have maybe you know not even bro like what are some reggae records you're playing that are fairly new i play fever i play you know which is still a couple years old you know but there's nothing really new in the, in that scene in the caribbean yeah the the biggest the biggest ones that made it to top 40 was like the uh david Fall, yeah, but see, and Joanna, yeah, that's considered, you know. yeah, that's technically like Afro beats. That's like African music. Yeah. That's not, but it derives from that. But like, yeah, like uh, maybe Toast, like you know, yeah. but like, yeah. it, it, there's no, there's no crossover reggae artists now, you know, which is kind of whack. But I, I, that's why I, I mean, like, like I'm with you though. Like the old stuff, like always works. Yeah, it always works. Yeah, no matter. I mean, I still have a good time, like rocking, out, rocking it. So go back to like you guys wanting to break Sean Paul, like a reggae artist, because it, it was um he, 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 when like when, because uh, like. <laughs> You know, you guys are Latin. You're Colombian. You know, Laz is Cuban. Eddie Mix is Colombian as well, right? Yeah, and, yep. and, and so, what makes you guys in Power ninety six? There wasn't a lot of. Were there a lot of reggae DJs at Power? I mean, like Jamaican. No, but, but but that's the thing that we always mirrored the market, and there's a massive Caribbean and Jamaican population right. that they would go to the clubs as well. And we know that when we would play uh, Mr. Vegas and the Devontae and Tonto Metro and stuff mm -hmm. like that, the 
Hispanic community embraced it right. very much so. So, uh, but, but we were playing it on the radio as well. So right. it kind of like it's kind of like full circle where we play. Right. You feed it on the radio to the people; they hear it. Then in, at the clubs, they listen to it because they've heard it on the radio. Right. And then you know they embrace it, they dance to it, you know, and and it it worked. And so it, I guess you know it just it, that's why, for, in my opinion. Reggae ended up working here in South Florida as much as did because of the Caribbean influence and the Jamaican influence mm -hmm. and and so many people um obviously that just um that 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 uh from that culture right and and, and I said this before and you know I want to give props to Eddie Mix as well because this is what I noticed when I was growing up in in in, in working at Power and watching Eddie Mix work is that and this is the way I DJ to this day. I look at like I'm serving food when I DJ, right? And I look at you have your house music is your app appetizer. You have reggae music is your vegetables. You have hip hop music is your protein. You have your dessert is 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 reggaeton, right? And for me, I have to give you all of these. And if there's not new vegetables, then I have to play. I have to give you the old vegetables because I have to give you vegetables in my. So, for example, I'm playing new reggaeton. I'm playing new hip hop, but there's not a lot of new dance hall. So I'm giving you this still the old Power 96 reggae yeah. because I have to give you vegetables. Yeah. So it seemed back then like Eddie Mix, and this is what was dope about Eddie Mix is that when the 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 rotation didn't have vegetables, he would reach out to somebody like, "We need vegetables. Yeah. We need like, oh, we need a we need a reggae song right now. Sean Paul, <laughs> make this reggae song customized for Power 96 yep. because we need vegetables." We don't have a dessert right now. We don't have any house music. So and so creates some dessert because Power 96 needs some dessert. So the palette was always even. We were they were always serving a little bit of everything to everybody. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which, which was dope to me. You know, like the problem is that today there's a million artists, a million sources of music, mm -hmm. and so everything is so fragmented. Mm -hmm. Everybody is doing their own little thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it was before where when Power 96 would play a certain reggae song, everybody gravitated to that reggae song because that was the source of where they got the music and from. Could you, and Power couldn't make a song cool. Like you guys couldn't make it cool. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's harder to do that if a song doesn't, if, if a song, if a reggae song is not Shazamming already yeah. or it's not popping already, it's hard to. And then, but that happened also with wax songs like Spice Girls because mm. I, I hate that shit. Could you name a couple of those songs? Because those were classic Power. Like Power ninety six always had maybe one of those like gimmicky songs in rotation. Like, yeah. Like Who Let the Dog or, or, yes. or, or like Spice Girls or yeah or Cotton Eye Joe. Yeah. But I love my dog. But, but you guys kind of stayed away from like NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, no? Or did you? Oh uh, no, we 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 played we played some of it, and it, you know, funny story, real quick. Um, I was never a fan of the Backstreet Boys and the boy I, band I, shit. Yeah, I called it Cheese Street stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it's like Cheese Street, whatever. I will not lie, and I will tell you straight up that in nine out of ten of my DJ sets, if there's the crowd for it, I rock Britney Spears mm -hmm. and Sync Backstreet Boys in my sets. You're saying today or back then? Or not both? Today. Right. Today. But you didn't back then. I didn't. I hated it. Damn, I hated that stuff. Like, why? And now, have you tried when, when if you have a crowd for it? I have one. I call it the TRL set. Bro, like, like, like you could. If, hey, now you're an all star. Well, like, no, you could get off that type. So, of... So, so you know, I I've done those sets before. The the mm -hmm. baby hit me one more time. Mm -hmm. Um, Brittany and, and uh, as long as you love me, mm -hmm. the NSYNC stuff, Christina Aguilera, and if you have a crowd for it, bro. They go off. That's crazy. Yeah, they go off. It's I like heard. Vintage, I forgot bro. what DJ I heard. I heard him play it, and it was a. Uh, it was at the same club that you're playing Drake and Cardi B and like the you know the harder hip hop. Mm -hmm. And then he did a set like that, and I. I mean, I don't want to say I stole it, but I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. it, it does work. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and then I started trying it, and I'm like, okay. And I have like a little set where I can do like a 10, 12 minute set mm -hmm. of that stuff. And if again, if you have the crowd for it, and and it's one verse out, one verse right, out, right, right. And you have the right songs, it kicks ass. It hits. It hits hard. It hits. The it first time I ever seen someone do that, I, I got to shout out to DJ Cass. He's the first one I ever seen do that at Wood Tavern. I was like, bro, you're playing Britney right now, bro. Yeah. And, but but it, right. it worked, bro. That's you right. Know? And, the girls and, love it. And you the know? girls love it. So if I if I'm doing my top five DJs, you know that that you know that I inspired me. I'm gonna say Def, Zog, Laz, Camillo, and I'm gonna say, damn, I'm gonna say. Can I be higher on that list? This is no particular order. I'm just saying five. And well, just make sure I'm higher on the list. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you might be three. I'm, I'll um, take three. Yeah, and then uh, okay, fuck it. So give me your top three that you that inspired you. Oh, that's easy. Um, you could say five if you want. No, you no, I'll, I'll tell you right now. It was uh, so. I would say uh, DJ. Can uh, I say this? Can I ask you before you tell me? Yeah. Is one of those people Kid Capri? No. Okay. Okay. No. No. So back in the day, I'd listen on the radio and there was a guest DJ on Power 96 Mm -hmm. and I heard him scratching and this guy was a beast scratching and um, his name was DJ Zeus. Mm -hmm. His, His name is Jesus Salas. Okay. He's he's like the VP of programming right. uh, for um for for El We're not shouting out brands. Just say for <laughs> for El Sol and, and okay. uh, whatever that company what's that company? SBS. <laughs> SBS. So um this guy was a beast scratching like an animal. I'm like this guy's amazing. And so I, I I'd copy his scratching straight up. I don't even think he knows that. Mm. DJ Zeus. Uh Magic Mike. DJ Magic Mike from Orlando, but you know Magic Mike cuts so the record. I don't even man. know who that is. That's crazy. DJ Magic Mike, bro. Yeah. He is. He's the DJ Laz of Orlando. Okay. And so when you hear some of the old school bass songs, he like drop the bass, okay. drop it, drop, drop it, drop it, drop, drop it. Drop, you know the old school heads, the old Miami heads. They know mm-hmm. you know DJ Magic Mike. Uh, his albums, his um, his his scratching, whatever. He definitely inspired me. And then Laz, mm-hmm. I have to say Laz, yeah, 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 straight yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, Laz, you know he. Uh, He's an icon, obviously, and you know, with the scratching and the mixing and 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 all the mixes from back in the day, I yeah. listened to all of them. Yeah, and recorded them. Yo, why do you think Miami bass never really broke out of South Florida or Florida? Like, I don't what, know. You know, I don't know. I, I Did don't know, New Yorkers I, come and I, like I, make I, fun of it when you were here? Like, I've had a couple of people. When I have played it and they don't recognize it, they're like, this music is very fast. <laughs> That's the comment that they make. So maybe it's just too fast for everybody outside of South Florida. I'm trying to think about that. Like, maybe is it like just when they're used to cold weather, they don't like tempo and energy and they just want to feel like slow and sad. Or it like was grungy. really, I don't know really what it is. just local stuff, man. I don't know. It just never. You got to think about it like this. Also, all those artists, you know, Uncle Al. Black Pack, Matt Blunted, and the old school. Before that, the, you know, Two Live Crew. Mm-hmm. All of that originated is from here in Miami. Right. So everybody would, all the DJs like would play that stuff, and it was part of the culture down here. But I don't, I don't know. I never, never saw DJs play that stuff in Houston or Chicago. Yeah, or New I wonder. York. I wonder why. Like, I, uh, it did. It be, last did blow up booty music in Texas. Okay. San Antonio and okay. Houston, um, it, it was big back in the day. It's crazy, man, because I would say two years ago for Art Basel, I booked DJ Enough. Mm-hmm. And bro, Zog, one of my biggest passions is to play, whether it's Miami bass or like Miami juke, yep. like Miami juke, it, I get a I get a passion for playing these records for to, for out of towners that half the crowd that's why I love brick half the crowd is like locals that are heavily local and then you have half the crowd that is from out of town so I love playing those records and you see half the people go crazy sing the songs and yeah. then you see the other half like yo what the fuck is going on like you know what I mean and I love it's a and I and I had that moment with DJ Enough where I'm playing he's like he's like yo chops I've never heard these records in my life and, what and, records were you and, playing. I'm so high grind mode. Really? Yes. Uh, uh, I know. I know uh, chaos. Yeah. Chaos. Uh, that's my boy. Yeah. So I, I don't think it was a Miami bass set. Maybe I did play a little bit of Miami bass, but I was definitely grind mode. I think I was in a juke set like that. That era. Yeah. That, yeah, that yeah I know. I know era. all yeah. those songs. Uh, uh, you know, shown and like, booty music by a Get Fresh. Yeah. Exactly. That 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 era. And and he's like, I don't know, but he sees everyone reacting to it, yeah. and, and I like that type of shit, man. Yeah. And I've always wondered like why it's harder for us to. For our local shit to break out, you had Pretty Rick, you had Pitt, you had Flow, you know, you, yeah. you had a couple of them, and but it just it seems like it's. it's, it's, it's I don't hard. know, man. Somebody's gonna be listening to this podcast and go, "You idiot!" The reason why that music didn't break out naturally is because. And yeah, you know, that, like, yeah. Answer the question. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah man. I, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I. I, I don't. Yeah. Know, I, because do you, think, do you think that it can? Okay, this is what I think. But yeah. my my theory is that all these kids are on downers. And and they just want slow, sleepy music, all seventy BPM tempo. And Where? Just, no, I'm I'm asking you. Do you think Miami booty fast music uh-huh. can come back? I say that if we had a young kid that can hop yeah. on and just make it cool, shoot yeah. a video, and let yeah. the kid be like, oh, maybe a TikTok. Yeah. Like yeah. this is something we've never heard before. Yeah. But but do you think it can come back? Like I, I think I think it can come back because I think we've seen other things come back. Right. And it's full circle. And 
Um, it's not like we're talking about like some alien something that is different that has never been heard of. I mean, it was part of South Florida culture. So right. can it come back? Absolutely. I mean, I, I told you the other day, right? Uh, uh, what is it? Pop that by yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, right. Rick Ross. Yeah, French Montana. Yeah, Drake. Yeah, but yeah, but you they, know, they, comes they, from what? Right, but they took a they took a a, a one forty sample and double timed it down to seventy, so it's still trappy. It's still it, yeah. it feels like it's moving at one forty, but it's still yeah. boom, boom, it's slow, you know. So, but yeah, that's why you got to mix the instrumental of Scarred with it. Yeah. To well, teach these bitches how it's done. Bro, I think every single booty set that I play to get out of it, I go f f to pop that. Yep. You know, I just yep. play the, the loop. True. Don't stop, pop that. Acapella for a couple bars and then go into, you know what I mean? Like, Boom, yep. I, I, I do the same trick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop. Go, go, don't stop. Pop hey, that, pop hey, that. Don't hey, stop. Hey, yeah. hey, hey. So shit, bro. I got DJ Zog here, Miami on the Rocks, Power 96, Miami Legend. Um so you you're you're doing the morning show right now. Yep. With, with Lucy and Yep, yep. Bro. It's you, what's dope about it. Um obviously shout out Lucy Lopez. We have fun just you know mm -hmm. we have like no script you know mm -hmm. it's like we try to reflect the market what's happening we talk about everything the paul ghetto expressway everything but in terms of a, from the dj perspective because I, I mix twice in the mm -hmm. morning 8 30 and 9 30 you know i play what i whatever i want i was gonna say yes g given given your whole tenure of power is this the closest you felt to how it used to be yes as far as like yes yes because there is no I'm smart enough not to sit there and play unfamiliar songs. Right. I'm not going to do that. Right. You know? Because you have a program director's knowledge already. Like, you have yeah. a pro. You yeah, know? Like I, I, exactly. And so I try. And, and what's fun is we can establish a vibe just like we were talking about before where it's like, if I want to do a reggae set, I'll do a reggae set. I play the right songs. If I right. want to do Miami Juke set, right. I do that. I, I did a booty set yesterday, right. you know, at 8.30 in the morning playing, if you got a lot of booty and 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 and, and all the, you know, um, Classic. Do, uh, I want to rock my by by Luke and mm -hmm. all that all the classic booty music stuff like that you know and then at 9 30 I did like a freestyle set you know mixed in with like some of the old school two life crew stuff so it was uh it's it's a blast because wow. it's like yo no one's telling me what I can and can't play yeah you know and I just I established that vibe how does it feel now that you're like we're like in the TikTok generation and you have social media and like does it change the way you do radio like does it change um yeah, you know, everybody's attention span is like this. Sucks, man. Like yeah. this, I mean, you know. And even when you're DJing, it really has changed. Like, you know, that that those that era back in the day where you would can play actually maybe two verses. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, and people enjoy the song. Uh-uh. Right now, one verse out, one verse out, one verse out. And that and that even sometimes, sometimes is like sometimes just a hook and now. That's like, right. That's right. That's how it is. But so people just get bored really quick. So you got to move the records. Mm -hmm. You got to move the records, which means you got to know the records mm -hmm. and you got to know what you're going to play. And you have to have like a game plan and a strategy because, you know, I've seen DJs and you, you lose, you lose it just playing an extra 20 seconds of a song and you lose the crowd. Wow. Damn. You know how that is, bro. Yeah. Yeah. yeah bro. Yeah. And it, um, it makes you think though. It's like you, if you're not on it, I mean, we've always kind of been fast paced with our DJing, yep. you know, like hook verse, hook out, you know, yep. like that's, that's right, you know, but uh. sometimes it's like to make sure because their attention span is so short. Yeah. It's like, forget about one verse out. It's one hook out. Sometimes it's especially with those slow records, half hook out. It's yeah, like yeah. sing, you know, whatever, sing uh, the hook starts, boom, boom, next one, boom, out. Damn. It's, it happens. You, 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 you told us about your schedule when you were DJing in the club sick. Have you been on a seven day a week schedule before? Like DJ seven days a week consecutively? Uh, did I do that? Um, I think the most was six. Six. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of like where I'm at right now with my schedule. And I'm here like, I because I said this all is that I look at DJing like a baseball game, right? Like I have a game tonight. Yeah. And, and if you're not on, you can't drink every baseball game you play or else you're not going to be, if you DJ two, three times a week, you could get fucked up at everyone and still maintain your health because you have two days to rest. Yeah. But when you're DJing six days a week, you really have to be like on top of your shit and i mean you said you slipped because you were young at the time and, yeah. and you you so i mean how do you manage like your health wise or drinking and knowing when to drink when to not drink when to you know what i mean like it, it, that takes true skill 
Yeah. That's where the, discipline more importantly, the like, professionalism comes in. I, I think that, um, that because we've seen DJs fall, right? We've seen DJs let, let this industry eat them alive when it comes to drinking drugs and, and shit like that. I, I've seen, I've seen DJs have to be carried out of the DJ booth because they got too fucked up. Yeah. And good thing there was like another DJ there to like take over. Yeah. And they had to like throw the DJ in the office. Right. For for him to like. Because I say, but when we go out, it's like we're fighting the devil. You have yeah. drinks, you have women, yeah. you have all these things yeah. that are great. That like people would die to be in that position, yeah. but you can easily overindulge yourself. And, very, and it, whether it's women, whether it's drinks, yeah, whether it's it, drugs, whatever. Yeah, very quick. I mean, you know, listen, fast food. You, you always know. you always always have that bottle of water with you in yeah. the DJ booth. Mm. But but you you discipline yourself and you do what you can. But I ain't gonna lie, it's hard for me to DJ sober. Yeah, I, it's difficult for me. I can't get on the vibe with everybody else. I can't be on the same wavelength unless you know I, I I'll take some shots. But you know, with uh, a little bit of experience, you're able to you know you you can feel your body. You don't right. get out of control. Right. Yeah. Damn, bro. DJing sober is tough. Did you did you yeah. ever get out of control at one point? Um. No, you know what? I'm, really? I, 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 uh, as far as what though? Like, as far as getting so drunk, I'm not the okay. For, first of as far, okay, let's say as far as the, you know what, Zog? Sometimes I and I wish I. <laughs> this is gonna sound crazy, but like I envy the dudes who do, do cocaine. I wish I could have that much energy, but I've never been on the drug side of shit. And and as far as like drinking goes, the thing I've always gotten really sick when I get. So if I mm. drink the next morning, I am sick the next day. Yeah. So I've never really like. I've never been one of those guys that could drink. I'm glad I'm not one of those guys that could drink every day cause, and not get sick because I would drink every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, but nah, man, I don't think I've ever, I've I've had bad hangovers, bro. Like bad, like, and it yeah. makes me not want to drink for a week. Like, You ever I'm throw up before you come home? I'm the guy who throws up in the morning. I'm mm. not the guy who throws up before I go to sleep. I'm the guy who knocks out and Got then it. wakes up and I throw up crazy. Yeah, it's happened to me a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All those damn yeah. Jameson shots. That's why when you offered me Jameson, I just had flashbacks of me throwing up in my front door. That's crazy. Like even yeah. even like trendy like liquors go through trends. Like what was the cool thing to drink back then? Like remember when, like Cristal was like the thing. Oh, no, you know, Cristal. you're hypnotic. Bro, I went to prom with Hypnotic, the fucking blue potion shit. Like, yep. does that even exist anymore? I don't know. Yeah, terrible. <laughs> like blue sugar water. <laughs> terrible. What is that? Oh, my God. No, another one that was really cool that I, I think it was the first time I got drunk, Bacardi Limon. Oh, there you go. Uh, I love that. I love topping my Coronas off with that still. It's called the Loaded Corona. <laughs> Legend right here, veteran. Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't you love the loaded Coronas? Yeah, bro, I haven't had Bacardi Limon in at least 10 years. That's yeah. insane, bro. That's what but I do right there with the, the loaded Coronas. I got a friend of mine. He had never, ever heard of that in his life. So he, he's like, hey, man, what was that thing that you you, you said uh, you ordered an angry Corona? And so he called it an <laughs> angry Corona from like, from like, hey, let me get an angry Corona. Did you? Okay. I want to ask you if your drinking career happened like mine to where like you get really fucked up on one drink and you're like, I'm not going to drink that anymore. And, and you. And you blame it on the type of drink and not the amount that you drank. So you switch up your drink and be like, oh, Crown and Gingers, this is working That's good exactly for me what happened with Patron. Okay. And that's why, like, I ended up hating Patron. And it was like, yeah. well, you idiot. Stop. <laughs> it's not about Patron. It's the amount yeah. of shots that you're taking. And then you you're like, okay, wait, I'm going to mix the Crown with ginger ale. I think this is the one right here. And then I you never, go through I, the month and you're like, this is the drink. My first drink, though, my first ever drink, drink was an Amaretto Sour. Wow. And I thought, I thought I was hard. Wow. And now thinking about that, man, I'm actually just, I can't believe I just said that in public. It's embarrassing. Wow. <laughs> Have you, ever, this hour. have you ever been like soup? I mean, maybe probably on a live broadcast, right? Just been super fucked up DJing, but like yeah, you're on, of course. But you're on the air. Yeah, that's happened to me on the yep. traffic jam. Have you have? Uh, like drinking in the station, bro. Uh, I remember, bro. It's ha that's happened maybe maybe two times, three times. Bro, I might edit this out because I don't put anyone blast. I probably will edit this out, but bro, I'll never forget when we were doing the morning show with Laz, and we used to do the Colito Mondays, and we used to go from the strip club straight to the radio station, and I will never forget. <laughs> Last would be there at 6 a.m. All of us are fucking lit from the strip club. And during commercial breaks, it'd be like this. Yeah. It would be like, Laz, one minute. Wake up. Wake up. It'd yeah. be like, yep. Power 96, DJ Laz. And yeah, like, right. bro, that shit was nuts looking back on it. So I, uh, I had to do like a weekend mix. So I'd go in. Uh, this wasn't actually that long ago. This was, I would say, like maybe seven or eight years ago when Jill was our program director. Mm -hmm. And but I didn't want to DJ. I was Friday or Saturday night, and I wasn't doing a club, and I was doing the the mix at the radio station live. 
And I said, I want to, I don't want to do this sober. I want to drink a little bit. Yeah. So I, I, I bring in some, you know, a bottle of something and I was like drinking a little bit. And then I left the bottle in the refrigerator and the cleaning guy <laughs> went to Jill and go and says, there's liquor in the refrigerator. They went back in the cameras. They saw that I was the one that brought the liquor and wow. I was, I was drinking and she's like, Oh, you can't be doing this. You can't be bringing liquor into the radio station. That's what she got and I'm like, man. it's Saturday night. I'm, by, yeah. I'm here with like a host. There's nobody yeah. here. <laughs> You know, it's like, but it, that's when that would get you fired today, though, bro. Back yeah. then, no one gave a bro. Yeah. We would have strippers like giving people lap dances and shit. Yeah. I, bro, I, I, <laughs> like, yo, I had a conversation with Joy. Um, shout out to Joy Taylor. Um, she's on the herd on, on Fox News, and we were just going over all the shit that she's looked. too popular for us now. Yeah, she, she's 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 too big time. She got lit. She 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 got popping. Yeah, but we used to go. We we had a conversation mm -hmm. with Laz about all the things he used to make us do, and we were like, "Yo, we should come up with a, a Netflix documentary, Surviving DJ Laz." Yeah, like, bro, I'll never forget, bro, the shit he used to, bro. Yeah. I, I fucking. You went uh, through it more than I did. I watched it all. See, I thought I had it bad, but then you think about Raj and Big Al yeah, and what the yeah, shit they. He, yeah. We it was like the Marlins like anniversary, so we got fucking Marlins pitchers pegging eggs at like the uh, at Big Al, like our intern. Yeah, that's I had right. A slap competition, like sh none of this shit you can get away with today. Yeah, we had strippers just coming at six a.m. straight from Tootsie's to give Evie a lap dance on her birthday. Like you think about the type of shit. Yeah, man, I never forget that we had a pitcher from the Marlins go and pitch eggs to Big Al and, and throw eggs. By, by the way, when he was, all he was wearing was like, was underwear. <laughs> Peg it with eggs. I remember but that. Like, 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 it was like, like, last to think of it, like, yo, this is entertainment. Like, let's do this. Let's fucking, you know, like, bro, I remember, bro, remember another one that sticks out to me, bro, is yeah. La Laz made me drink a whole, <laughs> okay, I'm going to say two of them. One, Laz made me drink a whole culotta of Cuban coffee. I thought I was going to have an aneurysm. Oh, my God. He's like, chops, let's just do it. Live on the air, and I'm here, like, shaking and shit. Like, we got the fucking new intern. He's always about to OD on Cuban fucking culottas, bro. Oh, like, wow. I'll never forget that one in the second one, bro. I always wanted to DJ. On, uh, I wanted to mix on the air in the morning show, do the mix. He would never let me do it. So one day I just come and my, I kind of did it to myself. But one day I was like, damn, I don't know. Someone's wearing a thong. We were talking about thongs and shit. And I'm like, damn, I don't know how women wear thongs. That shit must be annoying. Like that. Da -da -da. Laz goes, all right, chops, you want to DJ on the air? You got a DJ in a thong and you can mix on the air. Da -da -da -da. I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. And I wanted the DJ. So I had to go in the bathroom. I put on a fucking thong and I had to have my pants like halfway down so everyone could see the thong. And I got, <laughs> I, I, got, I, got <laughs> I got to mix the first time on the air, but I had the DJ in a thong, bro. I remember, yeah. I remember that. But it looked good on you. <laughs> it did. I remember. I'm like, okay. Bro. I mean, no, you know, don't take it the wrong way, yeah. but you know, you, you pulled it off well. Yeah. So not only did you pull off the thong well, but you were able to like mix on the radio live. Yeah. And you killed it. Do you, do you, any of those type of stunts like stick out to you? Maybe like in the earlier days before that, like that, uh, maybe traffic well, jam. Well, I, I don't, not like a, like a stunt like that, but I, I do remember it was, um, it was, uh, it, we would we would take the the power 96 van mm -hmm. down to coconut grove mm -hmm. and back in the day the grove was just popping all the cars with right. with the 15 inch subwoofers in the trunk and going real slow and everybody so we I'd, we'd go in the power van stop in the middle open up of the, the street of the right in the middle of of where um it's it's grand avenue and um where, where, where coco walk used mm -hmm. to be right in the center right there take the van stop it open up the back of the van pump the volume up and just be there for about like maybe three or four minutes which is a long time yeah. and it's like cause even more gridlock and wow. just the power 96 van was That's right so Ill, in bro. the That's middle so of coconut grove stopping everything and and and, and the speakers were i mean we're super loud yeah so, yeah and we we, we cause attention like that and then the, when the, i will never forget in 97 when the marlins won the world series we all went to the station and then um some of us jumped in one van and, and like drove to South Beach. I was in the other in the blue van, went to Coconut Grove actually, and people were out in the streets. And then they we were like stopped because of the traffic, and people would run up to the power van, and then start rocking it back and forth. So we're in there like that. What? We were like start banging on it, like going crazy. What? And then one guy was one guy uh, comes in and he starts banging on the window, and then he bang, he like goes poof poof. And on the third one, psh, shatters the glass. My head is right here. What? I'm like, I'm like there, and then doom, doom. Psh, what the hell? Like the it, 
like broken glass yeah. right next to my head. I'm like, what the hell is going on around here? I was like 19 years old. You wow, know, I've never like, heard that story. Yeah, it's, it was crazy. And uh, But, you know, I mean, back in the day, especially, uh, you know, when the Marlins won the World Series, I mean, the city just went, was upside down. And we were part of it. We yeah. were like right in the middle, just like experiencing it with everybody. A trend that I think is maybe two years old, mm -hmm. maybe three years old, is the brunch, the day party, yep. the Sunday. Mm -hmm. Sunday's a shit show, Zog. It's yep. like I'm double booked every single Sunday this month. And was that ever a thing? Like, was that, could you remember like day parties, no. like people getting shit faced like at 4 p.m. on a Sunday? Like, mm, no. Not, no. Right? What, what about pool parties? Would there used to be like a pool party? Mm. Wasn't Atlantis a pool party? Yeah. But, um, most, I mean, it, it was, you know, if there was a pool party, it was okay. It was mm -hmm. not bad, but the, just the nighttime stuff Yeah. back, back then. Oh, and by the way, one of like the big parties as well was a, like Sunday night at amnesia it was an all ages and it was a phone party. Very, very popular back in the day. That's, you know, that was about the phone parties. Yeah. But that, not amnesia on South beach. Yeah. That was when South beach was 18 and up, right? Yes. Wow. Yep. Like back in the day, like uh, like in regards to uh, maybe like some of the like the freestyle and dance music, some of that stuff was like, like yeah. for example, like what was huge as well that was here, like the Stay in Love, Mona Q, like the TKA, Stevie B. Well, that that was more of the freestyle stuff, but um, I'm not even familiar with what you just said. What is it? Stay in Love by Mona Q. How does that go? How's the melody? Is it <laughs> Stay in Love. But is that like? Does it sound like freestyle? Yeah, but it, but it was not considered freestyle. Someone someone told me that freestyle was was is, was birthed in New York because I feel like freestyle is something unique only to New York and South Florida. Correct? Yes. Well, well, no. I mean, like uh, Chicago. Okay. Um, but but New York and Miami for sure. Like the why, why, top do two markets. why do you think that is? It's just because of the Latin. Because it's because it's like well, because it is Latin music. Well, right? it, it, well, it was it wasn't called freestyle back then. Back then, it was called Latin uh, Latin hip hop. What I didn't know this. Yep, it was called Latin. Wait, it was uh, yeah, what? Latin hip hop. This was, is the nineties, right? This is what it was called at the time, and then and freestyle kind of. Um, Who gave it that name? I don't know. I don't know, but. Um, but you know, you talk to like Stevie B or or But or why George was Lamont. it called Latin hip hop? Because no one was speaking Spanish in freestyle. It was all English. But, you would have known. You wouldn't have but, known. But but they were they were Latin artists. Right. You know, George Lamont's Puerto Rican. Right. Uh, TKA. Those guys are Puerto Rican. Right. So um, and uh, but you know, Lisette Melendez, Judy Torres. Yeah. You know, they were all like well, yeah. you know Latin uh, Hispanic. So, and yeah, so it was yeah, for a lot of them are Puerto Rican. It would make sense that Miami and New York. Um, yeah, that it was birthed there. Yeah, and that, but but Power ninety six played a lot of those songs, which is why in Miami, uh -huh. those that the genre was just so big. Wow, the, I say I say all the Puerto Ricans left Miami. I don't know why. There used to be a lot of Puerto Ricans here, and they all, I think they went to Orlando. <laughs> like, no, for real, Kissimmee. Like, I need to go to Kissimmee, and I'm, like, you know. I, I mean, there's there's they're still here. Be careful, yeah. they're watching. <laughs> Yeah, who, who, yo, the cra the craziest uh, Latina that you've ever dealt with. What was her nationality? Have you had any crazy girlfriend stories, bro? Yeah, we could talk about this. Like you got, yeah, um, yes, yes. Actually, one was Colombian. <laughs> she she was uh, she was a little bit crazy, and then. The other one, the other one just did me dirty, and she, but she was Puerto Rican. Yeah, <laughs> we all have that Puerto Rican story. Like, yeah, how, yeah, bro. How do you, uh, bro? You're a legend in the, you're a veteran in the game, and and and, and you had to deal with women. And yes. How do you, how do you juggle that, man? How do how do you how does how do we make it work? Because I feel like it's hard for us to stay in a relationship, man. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. They got to be real, real have you, understanding. Have you been? Let's. Have you been? You know, throughout your whole DJ career, mm -hmm. have you been in a relationship more than you've been single? Would you say? It, I, was it easy for you to be in a relationship while you DJ? It 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 wasn't easy because there's always you have to have someone that that trusts. The, the, right. the trust levels, it's, it's got to be there. Right. Because guess what? You know, you have women coming up to you all the time, no matter what. That, that's what I'm saying, Zog. So as a, as a young DJ, yeah. it, it's kind of weird. It's, it doesn't make sense to me that why, how could you put yourself in a situation to where you would have a girlfriend and have to like fight all this temptation? I'll tell you time. why. Because when I DJ, people assume that you have just all the girls all over you and you're right. just whoring yourself out. Like, well, and it's like, no, no. Guess what? 
I took my job seriously. Mm-hmm. And that's the one thing I will tell you that, you know, it's almost as if I put up like a cement wall around me. And when I'm DJing, I focus on the music and the crowd and the party and the control of the room. Right. But when you get off, you have 20 girls wanting to talk to you when you get off. Right. And, 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 and but you've chosen to have a girlfriend at that time. Yeah. Like, and, and, yeah. Which I is, don't know, I mean, which is, you know, like, I, that, you know, I don't know. I, I don't, I mean, I can't think about like one, because when I was done DJing, I was probably drunk half the time, you know, so yeah, I yeah. don't re- really remember specific situations, but yeah, yeah of course there are some like want to chat and some want to, you know, talk about, Star Wars. <laughs> are you okay? Uh, are, are you, uh, what, where does your belief lie in this regard? Are you for you think it's better that your significant other comes with you to the club, or you have the belief that just stay away from the club where I work and it's better that we keep those things separate? I don't separate? really care. Mm-hmm. I don't really care, but it's probably better if she doesn't. Mm-hmm. Just so you know, because you're gonna have your your you know your one or two or a couple of girls that are always gonna come up and ask for a song or and touch you be and like extra do- friendly and blah blah blah, you know, and that's just that's just the nature of the game, famo. <laughs> have you have you have you ever seen? Maybe it hasn't happened to you, but have you ever seen like a DJ like his girlfriend just completely wild out ape shit while he's DJing yes. in the club? And- I have seen that. Yes, one hundred percent. Yep. Like Bob's yep. Thrown, like what are we yep. talking about? I, I, um, you know, th- that that whole like dramatic, freaking <laughs> almost fist fight. You know, it's like, wait a second, this guy, the DJ, is supposed to be playing the music for you know for the people in the club, for the customers right now, and here he's having a, a complete breakdown, a relationship, a divorce with his <laughs> with his girlfriend. And, like, what is going on right now? But you know, that's just he's he's got to put her in check, man. Yeah. Yeah, understand that you got a job to do. Yeah, I, I, because that's, I'll be honest with you, dog. When you say, have you had trouble with drinking? And and I've been good in that regard. But what I do envy is, is, is the DJs that are able to be in relationships. Mm -hmm. Because what I indulge in is, is the women. I don't indulge in the liquor and and, and that, like, it's temptation for me. You know what I mean? And, and, and when I look at DJs like that have been in long relationships, I, I give those type of DJs props, you know, like, yeah. like, 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 you know, when you look at the Camillos and a lot, like the family mans and, and you've been with your girl for a long time and yeah. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, yeah. like that is like a superpower to me. Like that's discipline to me. The yeah. way people would look at me, like, how do you not drink so crazy? You know? Like, yeah. She, but she, she understands. And, and, and at the end of the day, I'm coming home to her anyway. That's true. You know? So it, it doesn't, you know, I've become, I, eventually you just, you become numb to it. Yeah. You become numb to it. And yeah. that, you know, and that's it. I mean, you know, there was a girl tonight that was, you know, she came up and she was like, she's being like, you know, oh, I'm loving this music or whatever. And, you know, and she gives me her like her her, her business card <laughs> straight up. She's like, Oh, if you need an attorney, let me know because I, I work for an attorney's office and uh, you know, if you get in an accident If you need an attorney, get the <laughs> Yeah, look, she gave me a business card. Hey Poppy, have you been in an accident recently? Yeah, like that. Just Yo, like that. You the know, the PPP she, slip and fall game is crazy. Yeah, yes. And uh, you know, she was like friendly and she she was dancing to all the music and she was being yeah. very complimentary about the music and I appreciate that. But then she started she had kind of got like really close and started like dancing like right next to me where it was like six inches away from me. And I get it, you know, she mm-hmm. but they want to be near the DJ booth and and, and they want to I guess look cool to their friends or whatever. And then but I'm like I need my personal space. Yeah. You know? So I I, I actually uh, very easy. I'm you think, sweetheart, can you do me a favor? Do you need any, <laughs> whatever you need, what do you want? I, go, I need a bottle of water. But but the bartenders the bartenders were so busy that she had to wait. So perfect, it's the perfect opportunity for me to get her away from me, bro. Do you think about like what life would have been like, for example, in the club deep days? Like if you had social media, like if you had Instagram. Oh my god! Like if a lot of them things were like like on video. If and there shit. was social media, the way it was today, back in back in the day, back in, yeah. in the late nineties, um, I, I I don't I don't know what type of world this would be. <laughs> I don't know the type of planet we would be living on because yeah. th- that Where shit, microphones are going, you know, like it. Yeah. That shit was crazy back in the day. It was just wild. Oh, just, just picture. No, you can't picture. I'd have to describe it to you, but I can't do that. That's because the beauty of it. Cause it was never captured. Yeah. So like, that's why it was yeah. cool. That's I have why. a couple of not, I mean, it was pictures of the club mm-hmm. and that brings back memories, but like actual like things happening and just craziness happening. I mean, I'm sure there's pictures out there, you know, the, those uh, disposable yeah. Kodak cameras, but I mean, it, you <laughs> know, people, people, people back in the day enjoyed the moment. 
Mm. So they weren't mm. focused on like trying to stuff sh- like that. show other people that they're enjoying yep. the moment. Mm-hmm. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because social media is like a job in itself. Um, it is. It is right. It's tough. Like, uh, are you on all platforms? Or are you trying to just yeah. no? And not. I'm not on TikTok. That's the hard one for me to get on Zog. That's the tough one for me. And I know it's like overtaking Instagram kind yeah. of, but I can't, bro. I, I refuse to disclose all my information to the Chinese government. Screw them. Okay, now we're talking. Yeah, you know, for people that don't know, Zog is um. Damn, how would I describe you? You're, I don't want to call you a conspiracy theorist, right? No, you don't that's, call you that's that. no, because that's inaccurate. I'm more like conspiracy realist. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm a type of guy that if you give me information, I'm going to look it up and I'm going to question stuff like that. So don't tell me something and expect me just to go along with it. And so, well, the problem is that we could find information for any narrative correct. we want to paint. Yes. We could find information yes. to why the vaccine is bad. We could find information to why the vaccine is good. Right. We could find information on why right. I could talk. I could literally Google. Yes. I could Google, um, 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 the vaccine Finland government corruption. I could Google anything and we'll get a story about how the Finland government is trying to create the vaccine. You know what exactly. I mean? There's anything you could right that's the problem with today is it but are you able to accept or seeing the different perspectives even if it goes against what you believe in and right. that's very difficult for a lot of people because if you see information that goes against something you're not used to or mm-hmm. that you know you're you haven't been taught that right. or that's considered wrong or bad right. then you shut it down right away or are you willing to see all sides and everyone says yes mm-hmm. but are you really really able to um interpret and gather this information and then and then process it and accept and maybe even change your perspective on something that's right. not easy to do but the problem is we could sh- present facts for both sides of You're everything right. yes. so how do you really you know what i mean like come to a conclusion on things you the truth to, is almost relative you now. have to you have to just come up with your own conclusion and yeah f- and figure it out on your own because even you know when people say oh i did my research and they start looking things up the problem is and here here's a perfect example if you google something and the f- top three articles are exact are what you were googling and to go, wait a second. So your brain automatically assumes that mm-hmm. exactly like what you Googled or what you're looking up mm-hmm. is true because you see three different articles mm-hmm. with the same whatever it is, right. message or, or whatever it is you're looking up. So then you think you've done your research and then you think that that is the truth. Right. And that's and that's the problem where it's actually designed that way. There's mm-hmm. algorithms, as you know, right. that are incorporated in everything that you search for, which is, you know, why every single time you open up your phone and, you know, you freaking, you know, you, you know, you looked up whatever it is, a certain type of shoe. That's all the ads you get for those right, damn right, right, shoes, right. you know. So it really depends. Are you open enough? The, people don't have time. Right. Though. They don't have time to actually. And people think they do research. Flip it. Scrolling on Facebook is not research. Yeah. You know, going on Google thinking, because guess what? Go, even Google, you know, mm-hmm. Google is, is a you know, multi-billion dollar company mm-hmm. and there's, you know, some things are, 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 are blocked or some things are, um, you know, are, are, are not at the top of the list. Things are right. sponsored. You know that I right. use a different search engine. You know, mm-hmm. I, because I don't, you know, I just, I, I want, and I, I want to see, I, I try to get as much information uh, so I can come to my own conclusions. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to understand though that everything is bought and paid for. I, I you know, going down this route is it's kind of complicated and everybody yeah. has a perspective on it yeah. and stuff like that. But I'm just the type of guy that like, you know what, give me as much information as possible and I will come to my own conclusion. Right. Don't tell me something and just tell and obey. I'm right. not going to do that. You know, and, and man, you know what I've been, I, I've learned and I've realized is that, and I, and, and I think podcasting for this podcasting, long form conversation, cause nuance is gone. So long form commerce, for example, this whole vaccine shit or this whole coronavirus thing, there's, uh, you, you can go on Facebook and see a video of a doctor. Boom. This yeah. doctor thinks this, and now you're like, Oh shit, but you don't really know this doctor. So what podcasting allows you to do is it allows you to, to get to know somebody. I can, for example, damn, how do I, I'm gonna chop this up, but there are, uh, for example, there's a doctor I, I listen to, Peter Atia. He has a podcast, and I've listened to him speak probably for over 
20 hour, 30 hours, 40 hours of my life. And he talks about his life and what he's done and this, that. And I feel like I know him kind of like on the radio, yeah. right? How we used to get to know like, oh shit, I feel like I know DJ Laz a little right, bit. You know? right. So when Laz tells me something, he's t- he tells me within getting to know him, we know the good things, the good times Laz has had, the bad times. He's transparent. He tells us about his whole life. So I feel like I can trust him now. So people are getting information from people they don't trust. So you got to get to know somebody. So this guy, I trust him. So if he tells me about the science of that, I can trust him because I've listened to 50 hours of him talk and I feel like I know him and I can trust him. But we're getting just quick little tidbits. Everything is a tidbit. Everything is a headline. And you're going to get a quick little tidbit. Oh, I believe this. We live what's in the source. We live in a TikTok world, bro. Yeah. Everything, you know that everything yeah. has to be, you know, well, not even 15 seconds anymore. Now it's eight seconds, right? Right. right. Everything is just, it's got to be like that, you know, which is why memes have become so popular right. because it, it's, you know, it's a way to kind of like trigger somebody's head into thinking something without a l- long explanation. Has that happened? Cause for example, you're in broadcasting and, and you're on the morning show and you have a large audience and and you talk for, you know, it's not long form, but you, you have longer talk breaks. Have you had somebody misinterpret something you say by only, they only heard maybe a clip of what you said or like, have you had something acute? You know what I mean? What I'm trying to get yes, at? Yes, it, it, it happens. It happens every so often. Yeah. And I get yeah. the DM of somebody said, how dare you say this? Or how come you said that or whatever? And it's but like, maybe they only caught a little clip and they didn't hear the whole thing in context because context is important. Context is, is, is what it's all about. And so when, you know, I have to sit there and explain to somebody. Somebody where you know, um, yes, you heard me say this, but this is exactly what I meant. You know, people they interpret it however they want to interpret it, and that that's a problem. And it's it's happened numerous times. Yeah. You know, it's always there's always going to be somebody pissed off out there, no matter what you say. For sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a fact. I mean, so but I got DJ Zog here. I appreciate you coming through, bro. Um, tell people where they could follow you at DJ Zog. For those of you. That did not win the spelling bee like I did in second grade. Do they have those anymore? I don't know. Those were good. Yeah. DJ Z-O-G. So after this, I expect at least, at least three or four follows. Okay. Are you going to, (laughs) um... Are you going to, um, tell people where your Hawaiian shirt plug, where you get them from, or are you going to keep that secret? I got to keep that secret, fam. can't tell anybody. Is it Chico's? Is it Chico's in the mall? Ah, no, I don't, I don't shop there anymore. No. Uh, They're overpriced. (laughs) Look at this. Yeah. I, you, you, you like you like the, the the yellow pop makes my tan pop yeah, a little bit. Huh? It looks like I'm ready to go to the Turks and Caicos tomorrow. Hey, <laughs> where's your favorite place you DJ outside of Miami? Ooh, great question. Belize. Damn, that was random. I remember you used to do that. Was Belize. that was like a Caribbean vibe? Yeah, yeah, completely. I, great story, real quick. I get um, they message me like, oh, we want you to DJ at this party at this lounge in Belize. I'm like, no problem. So um, I. I get there and like, what type of music, you know, because, you know, I want to do my research, make sure I play like the right genres and, mm-hmm. and the right music. Like for, what do the Belizeans listen for to? The right, yeah. For the right. They heard me from my podcast, my, my, uh, on like SoundCloud at the time. And they loved all my mixes and they were all top 40 stuff. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I, the, the Rihanna's and the Drake's a little house, a little hip hop, little old school, little reggae, a little bit of everything. So I'm like, okay, cool. No problem. So I'm like rocking the night. And then suddenly I'm like, it, it was okay in the night. Like, I drop a reggae song, and then <sighs> they get crazy. I'm like, wait, what happened there? So I drop another reggae song. You know, the classic stuff. Um, like, Heads High and Action and, right, you know. She Wrote type shit. All yeah. that stuff, right. And and they're just, and they're going crazy. I'm like, and I have an arsenal of the classic reggae stuff. Yeah. I got all that Zog, stuff. I want to stop you right there. Your reggae sets, I want to say... you. I would say you might be known for those, bro. Like, I think out of all the sets you do, I think your reggae sets, when people hear them, are, are the most popular. I'm going to go out of limb and say that. I, I mean, I, I I lived it. Right. I rocked it Why, back did, in why the do you 90s. think you gravitated to that so much, that genre? Because it worked every time for me. Did you like playing the rhythms, going back between the rhythms? Or what made you? Because your reggae sets definitely stood out, I'll be honest with you. Like, yeah. I don't know why. Like, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I just, it was, it, was, it was the magic of... Of the DJing, but I don't what know. about the genre that you just gravitated to? Like, you know, like I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I just, your, your reggae sets always stood out to me. I don't well, know. I don't well, know why. That, that all that stuff was working in Belize, and uh-huh. then here's what ended up happening. So 
suddenly it's two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. I weave in and out of other genres, but I would always then I'd go back as the foundation mm-hmm. was the reggae stuff and some reggaeton as well. Before I know it, it's six o'clock in the morning. The sun's coming up. Legendary in Belize. That's fire. No, and then I stopped the party and I said, "That's it. I can't do this anymore." It was like it wasn't that many people left, but still the party was going on because I have to catch my flight. My flight, my flight was at seven thirty in the morning or some shit like that. Mm. So, how long? How long was the set? I started at like, I think I started at like eleven. Damn, it's like a seven eight hour set. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yep. I repeated some songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, ha- I had to, you know, because I have a lot of reggae and dance hall, but yeah, after seven hours and to keep them going, and I'll, I'll never forget that. Um, it was about seven or eight years ago, and then um, we we had a taxi. Then pick me and my boy up from the hotel. We drove uh, to the airport, and then we're suddenly like cruising. And there's there's the runway. All right, we're cruising. I'm like, why are we why are we cruising at 35 miles an hour? It's because he ran out of gas, so he was in neutral. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then finally he just like pulls up to the gate. Bam, we got, I don't know how we ended up like going after that, but I'll never forget that. And so after that party, word got out, the, the word just got out and uh, I got booked again like the next year. And after that, I did, I went to Belize like five more times and I did I this that. massive, uh, it was in San, San Pedro, which is a small island. Um, one of the keys, because like how we have the Florida Keys there, mm-hmm. Belize has keys. Mm-hmm. And one of the keys is San Pedro mm-hmm. Island. And I'd go there and they'd have, they throw a stage on the beach and everybody would just come. Imagine like a thousand people on the beach, wow. on the sand. And I'm there, you know, uh, on the stage, like rocking just a little, like everything, all the, a lot of reggae, but I play like, it turned to like a beach EDM festival, festival. type thing. Yep. How long has it been since you've been back there? Uh, I haven't been back to, I, I, I think it was two or three years ago, mm-hmm. about three years ago, but I, I, I would go a lot. And you're like me, you go to Colombia often, yep. right? Cartagena, mm-hmm. I haven't DJed there though. Yeah, you, You've been yeah. to Medellin though? Uh, I have not, not yet. Actually, oh. I'm DJing a wedding there in a couple of months. You go, Oh my God, you're going to love it. Actually, bro. you know, I'm uh, Rascal, you know, DJ Rascal. Yeah. I'm DJing his wedding. What, in Medellin? Yeah. That's fire, bro. Yeah. yeah. And so all the places you've been in Colombia are, are basically Cartagena. It's just, uh, just Cartagena and San Andres Isla, which is a small yeah, island. Yeah, yeah. I have a I lot of to, friends from there. Yeah, I, yeah. I used to, my, my uncle lives there, so I used to go there like what? all the time. But uh, but I've been like... Private, yeah, bro, it's, yeah. You, you, if, yeah. um, so a lot of my friends, are, they live in Medellin, but they're from San Andres, and it's crazy because they have more of a Jamaican influence, so oh. it's crazy. They're Colombians, but they speak Spanish with like a Jamaican accent. That's so crazy. it's super unique, bro. They're That's like, crazy. big up, man, but they're speaking like Spanish on you. That's like, crazy. Which is fucking dope. I just want to bring that up but no that's crazy but real quick belize belize also um <clears throat> when i dj'd in brazil i dj'd in brazil about it was it's been about nine years since brazil but i'm think i'm getting all this like samba style like house by funk in brazil brazilian <laughs> music yes all that stuff i'm getting ready right so i show up t- to it was it's called nick's and it was it was not it was more of like a like a restaurant, but then afterwards it turns into like a lounge, like clubby style or whatever. And it was a great party, and and I have all this stuff and I'm playing everything and you know people are kind of moving or whatever. But you know what they ended up wanting to hear the whole time they want to hear oh, the small town girl living in a lonely world. Don't like stop. the white girl Coral Springs set. Yeah. Oh. Whoa, living on a prayer. It was like, Damn. what is this? And then, and then eventually, like, I transitioned into, and like, the dude's like, yo, DJ Zog, DJ Zog, yo, play Tupac, <laughs> play Biggie. I'm like, so here I am in Brazil. I did all my homework. I did all this, like, baila, funk, yeah. samba style, house, you know, whatever music, Brazilian house music. And here I am playing, it was all a dream. I used to read What Up magazine, and it was all about Biggie and Tupac and they, Snoop they hear that shit and all the, the classic time. and Madonna and Prince and Michael Jackson and all the classics. So it was like, I, you know, I, I, wow. I was unexpected in Brazil. Wow. Are you still doing your pot? Are you still doing, like, mixes? Can people yep. tune into your yeah, mix? Uh, mix cloud and podomatic i post it i also do the uh the mix show on um on pitbull's globalization mm. every sunday at 5 p.m that's that, that's for the people listening that's the xm station on satellite radio yep. right pitbull's yep. station yep globalization yeah that's uh it's, it's dope because i got uh, i got you know people 
all from us and canada listening mm -hmm. you know uh all the time so i get like a lot of love on how's your, how, how's your relationship with pick because you, you're there from his inception like you're a big part of his yeah I haven't, I haven't talked to him in a while but we're, we've always been cool yeah we've always been we're like family so yeah. you know we're we, we've been cool, but, uh, but yeah. And then eight 30 and nine 30 every morning on power 96, man. That's, mm. you know, and what I've been doing is I've been going live on IG every single morning consistently. Like this is just, uh, you don't get kicked off a couple times, gotcha. a couple times, but you know, that's where, yeah. uh, that's where you, you, you know, um, when I talk on the microphone and throw off the algorithm yeah, right yeah, there, yeah, yeah. it oh, works, yeah. it works every time, you know, I'm and, waiting for them to allow people like, you know, me, like podcasters and shit to like pay a subscription yearly, say like, I'll yeah. pay $2,000 a year to like, allow me to license the music and put it in my content. Like a radio station does kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't want, I want to be able to freely put shit on YouTube, Instagram. I'll pay, bro. I'll pay two, $3,000 a year. If you could just allow me to, to put mixes on YouTube without getting a takedown on you know what I mean? Like yeah. I can't, I think we're, we're there soon. Cause that's going to happen soon. But so I appreciate you coming through, bro. Yo, hey, it was it was bro. awesome. Like I said before, uh, having me on. Hopefully, hopefully I'll get three or four followers um, and from this, and we'll take it to the next level. I have, I have a lot of friends that are like, bro, haven't, why haven't you had me on already? And you know what I tell them? I tell them, this isn't a type of thing where, because it's only growing. So the longer we wait, the more of an audience we're going to have. So it's almost like the priority doesn't go by first, the first person I want to pick. It, it comes from like my biggest interviews I'm waiting on or just I'm waiting on for the audience to grow a little bit before I get like. Have you had people ask you to come on numerous times? Yeah. Really? I've had people want to pay me. What? I have, I have artists that want to pay me, which I'm trying to do a separate thing for. Yeah, like yeah. artists and DJs. I'm trying to stay away from artists. I'm trying to stay away from DJs. And, and, yeah. but if it's like, you know, legendary talk with DJs and artists, then I'll do it. But, yo, I want to do something real quick. Hold on a second. Talk to me. Take the, take the headphones off. Okay. S -s swap. For a second. Just swap. Just swap. Okay. Don't, don't do anything. Just swap. Okay, just, we're, just, no, we're good. Just, just real quick. Just go ahead. Real quick. Damn, bro. Yo, real quick. Yeah. Okay. Yo. Yeah. Damn, yo, I've never sat in this Yo, seat. yo, Chops, you're taking the MIA on the Rocks podcast to the next level. Where mm. do you want to see it in the next, like, year or so, fam? Mm, mm. Well, it's a slow grind, Zog. Um, first of all, I just want to put God first. No, but for real, um, it took Joe Rogan 10 years, bro, before he got his $100 million deal with Spotify. It took Joe, Joe Budden seven years. And... I'll say this. I'll talk my shit. This podcast right now is in the top 5% of podcasts that exist. Yo, really? Yeah. All right, that's dope. Yo, have you thought about the Backsplash getting its own Instagram account? <laughs> that would be fire. Yeah. For the people that don't know, you I should, just chose my kitchen scheme as the same as my wardrobe. So all my wardrobe that. is white, black, and gray. Yo, have you had anybody on eat food during the, the, broad, the podcast? No. Really? Just drink and smoke weed. That's it. So no food allowed? No, not allowed, but I mean, I'm down. Yeah. Is the, cu the Cuban bread is hard enough to, to kill someone with, to give a concussion. Have you had any woman that is sitting in that chair right there disclose her underwear situation? No. No. I've heard, I've had women say that they eat ass. They like to eat ass. <laughs> I've heard women say a lot of things, but not their underwear situation. I've heard women say that when I ask them, would you rather get bomb head and average dick or uh, average head and good dick? I've had that question answered multiple times, but no. Is there somebody that you've had on that when you're done with the interview, you say, why the hell did that have that moron on? Yeah. <laughs> Ex yes. All I saw was that, that, that 400 K where it said followers on your Instagram. And I was like, that'd be a cool person to interview. Yeah. Little do I know <laughs> fucking talking to a rock. It's like talking to a tree. So is this person, you would probably consider one of the stupidest people that you've ever spoken to before. Damn. I don't want to say stupid, but I would say just like no person dry, no personality, no, no just clever stupid wittiness. Than stupid. Yeah, yeah. 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 Any other questions? Last question. Hold on. It's got to be a good one real quick. Um, Damn, I look is there somebody, that. is there somebody who's like your, the biggest goal, like who's the, the, the biggest name that you would like to see in that chair? Dave Grutman. 
Really? My problem is that I feel like these people are not going to come to the hood in Hollywood, bro. Yeah. I'm going to move to Miami soon and move this whole setup to, to Miami. Yeah. So it's more centrally located. But yeah, someone like Dave Grutman would, would, would be the goal. You don't if talk you to him? It. You don't talk to him? No. He's responded to my tweets a couple times, but as far as like, no, nah, I haven't been able to, I feel like he's like a guy, like I haven't got close to him. Yeah. You okay. know, real quick. Now I have a question for you. If you had to think of a Miami rush out Mount Rushmore for people to be on the Mount Rushmore of Miami, it doesn't have to be entertainment. It could be just anyone, any Miami Mount Rushmore. Who would you put on that for you? Damn, man. Cause Dave Grutman might be two of the four spots. Like, you know, like he's definitely one, but like, look, I, I give Dave credit mm -hmm. for what he's done. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, I, you know, he's doing his thing. You know, a lot of people, bro, he posted a video the other day yeah. on a beach in like the Bahamas. Yeah. Catching passes on the beach from Tom Brady. Yeah, I know. While David Beckham was playing cornerback. I know. Uh, how much swag can you get? Like, I know. That you can't. I and know. like Kim Kardashian's like clapping on the side. Like, bro. I know. Come on. I know. I know. It, it, look, <laughs> he's, he's doing. He's. I, I give him credit. I mean, he's the guy's. The guy is a god. Yes. Yeah. Um, Who's your Mount Rushmore? Uh, Mount Rushmore. I would say. It, it doesn't have to be DJs. It could be. It could be a DJ. It could be a just a businessman. I think it could be, should be up there. Uh, okay, I'm not mad at that. All right. I think, uh, I think that, uh, maybe, um, I know if Lucy's listening, she said maybe she'd that be guy behind you, but I don't know if that, if, if you know, <laughs> <laughs> he's fictional. Um, I think, I think also, um, uh, probably you think, you think Pitt is too, I mean, you know, Pitt put Miami on the map as well, he's man. He's got businesses. He's, yeah, a, he's made a lot right. of people. You, that's I'm right. not mad at that. I'm yeah. definitely not mad at that. And probably, but, um, like we got to put like. Um, uh, who, who, who's the couple that's from here? Emilio and Gloria Estefan, the same. Oh, okay. Yeah, Gloria yeah. Estefan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Gloria Estefan. She might have, maybe. Gloria Estefan would probably have to be up on there as well. I don't know. I, I, this, that, that's not a, yeah. not a fair question. Like, do we put, I mean, bro, do we put Dwayne Wade? Like maybe, yeah. like he's, you know, yeah. Dan Marino maybe like, yeah. Dan Marino for sure. Dwayne Wade. Yeah, there it is, bro. All right. This will be edited flawlessly anyway, so don't worry. All right. Yeah, we like edits. Don't worry. Yeah. Everything was smooth. There was no edits in this. That's right. Perfect. All right. There All it right, Chops. Well, I'm glad that uh, you came through. For appreciate sure. appreciate the uh, for sure. uh, your time and uh, all your information <laughs> that you have shared with the audience. You've definitely changed the world. Thank you. I, I'm trying. All right. And uh, just remember one thing. It's only illegal if you get caught. There it is. Be smart when you're being stupid, people. Thank <laughs> you.